Hello everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're on page 8 of You and Me, Stamparia's Wedding Collection. So we have two flaps on this page and they are four and a quarter, oops, do I have that right? No, four and three quarters by five, by eight and a half. Four and three quarters by eight and a half. You're going to score a half inch on the four and three quarter inch side. And they're going to get installed left and right. <clears throat> go. That's on crooked. It is pretty straight on top. I think I'm just going to trim that little bit off. Or I'm going to try. Because it's elevated. It's a little, little more challenging. Okay. All right. So I've got magnets on the left and right hand side. We're going to add magnets on the inside. Okay, now, as you recall, um, I cut the center out um, for the cover of the book and I used the circle in one part. This is the page where I cut um, the flowers off the edge to make a frame for um, the cover of the album. And this is what I cut out of the center. So I'm gonna put this down on the inside so you can, uh, so there's room for notes and Mementos. This is what's going to go on the outside. Okay, looks good. I said this is going to go here and then I have another one of these to line the inside and I'm looking through my papers to see if there's something I like better this would be an option I think it might not be wide enough yeah it is so that's an option too also this the flip side And then lastly, this. I think um, these two patterns together don't really work. I don't care for that. I like the colors together, but not the patterns. So I think the floral goes best. So it's, it's a question now of scale. And I think I'm gonna do this just because 
we've already got this pattern or this pattern on the outside so I'm going to put this one on the inside just for some variety okay I need a second I'll be right back okay everyone I'm back sorry for the break there I trimmed out my uh, secondary papers so let's go ahead and get them in I don't know why that's not sticking. Let's work on this side. I'll wait. Okay. And this is going to go in the center. So you can do lots of journaling here, but I'm also, I can also see uh, putting some pictures here. I'm going to add some embellishments before we wrap this up. I've got a couple of things fussy cut that I'm going to put in the corner here. And I think I'm going to put this little wedding thing there. Got another little rose that I'm going to stick in here. And then I've got this from the die cuts, which are the rings, which I think look cute up there. Let's see if there's anything else I want to use. like it by itself because it's it stands out better so I'm just going to do the bow and that way if you need to tuck your photo under it you can so you have the option and then down here I'll just do this little cluster I'm going to bow it a little bit just give it a little bit of texture not much because we have to close the flaps grief I got the dropsies okay so you can see there's just a slight tuck spot then I'm going to add wetting right here Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm 
trying to see if there's anything else I want to add. I think there's so much going on from the pattern perspective, I don't think I want to add that. <coughs> wow, excuse me. <clears throat> Let's see if there's anything. Uh, so we have this bird cage. I think is pretty cute but I think it just disappears I like this because the color works on here uh, so if I could find something yeah there we go put this here and it's just glued in the center so you can get a four by four right here and then I'm gonna make this a little tuck spot No, we've already got dimension here, so I don't want to add any more on this side. Okay, so I just did these couple of quick uh, embellishments. Now we need to do something with the cover. What are we going to do with the cover? I think I like this. I want to use that somewhere. The inside of here would be a good place to put the invitation as well. I'm not a big fan of the menu. Uh, it just doesn't seem that interesting. So I think I've got still some four by fours. I mean, uh, more like five by five squares. Yeah, let's take a look at these. Yeah. Let's see, I am going I think I'm going to try that one. I should have thought I had one already cut out that I hadn't used, but I must have used it. better. I think it's the frame that I'm attracted to. But you have some options. All right. Be right back i'm gonna uh, put this on some white cardstock okay i got my cardstock ready and i um am going to oh you know what i just thought of something i'm gonna apply this to the to the top like so uh, and i'm just gonna center it so i need to just put a little mark here and here for glue and I'm thinking about it I sh yeah <clears throat> Yeah, I really like this frame. Now I trimmed this one out to go here and I actually wanted it to be a full frame but now it interferes with this. Ugh, I don't like that. Uh, I might have to do something different there. 
I don't know if I can lift it without tearing it. Um, hmm, I really like the frame here. Maybe I can find a smaller frame. One of the three by six frames that I have here might work. It's not, uh, it's not gonna work. This might. It's not tall enough. Shoot, those don't work either, size-wise. Darn it. So here's the issue I'm having um, with, with putting that frame here. What did I do with it? Here it is. Um, one, we've got this interference. And then also, now um, my magnet has to go through another layer and it doesn't seem to want to. Yeah, I, can't, I don't think I can afford to add another piece of paper, which means whatever I put here, I have to trim out to fit. It can't overlap. I can't add any anything more over this magnet. <clears throat> I just want to see where they're at. Yeah, they are married. So that also means that if you put anything in this t uh, tuck spot, you have to be cognizant of where your, your um, magnet is. Now, if you haven't built the page and you're watching this, the way to do, solve all of these problems and to only use one set of magnets is to have a magnet here and here, like so. So that is an option um, if you haven't already constructed. It's actually a better solution than these two. I just didn't know I was gonna do this. It's called lack of planning. Yeah, that's what I'd call it. So now I need something to go here that coordinates and this'll do. I just pulled it out of my scrap pile. Trim this to fit and we'll get this down and that'll be uh, page eight. I need to clean up my workspace. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Too many things, too many tools are out upside down, so I want to measure it right side up to fit. I think I've knocked everything over on my desk at least three times. Some days it's just like that. Okay, there we go. That is PJ, and I think it's pretty. I love the rings, I think they're adorable. Okay, all set. Hey everyone, it's Daphne, and you were probably just with me while I put this together, and look what I did. This is right side up. I put this in upside down, so I'm gonna have to take this out, and I just wanna share with you that process. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my spatula, and I'm gonna be hopeful that I'm not gonna tear up too much of my designer paper um, that I can go oh, back over it. I'm hopeful. 
but it's not looking good. <laughs> I think I'm actually tearing the white cardstock and not the paper it's sitting on. So I'm not sure. I might not be able to reuse this frame. But we definitely can't be upside down. That's not going to work. So I'm just using some brute force to get this up. And the goal is to always push from the outside in because if it's going to tear, you want it to tear underneath the square because you can hide that when it's time to try to replace whatever you've done in the center. I've got one section here that is just really, really close to the edge. And it's actually separating the white paper. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to salvage this. That one I meant this. Can't salvage that. This will be fine. I will just cut out another frame, same size, and uh, put it in right side up this time. I just want to get some of the bulk out from here so that when I glue down the new one, there's not a, a, a rise on one of the corners. And it looks like most of the glue stuck to the white paper and not to the designer paper, which is good news. smooth, feels pretty smooth. Pretty much whatever I lay on top of this won't have, it won't show through. Okay, sometimes I can actually get to it fast enough that I could still lift it, but that was not the case. So with that, we are going to change the order that, um, oh, I did, I did everything upside down. Oh my God, the whole inside is upside down. Well, that's really frustrating. So now I gotta think about what I wanna do. So I'm gonna try to lift this designer paper and salvage it. I will use undo to remove the flaps and switch them. That's the plan. Let's see if we can do it. I'm gonna go slow because I'd really like this to I'd really like to save this piece of paper. I don't have another one to use. Okay, I'm gonna do this offline because I really need to get in and put my head over my efforts to see what I'm doing. But I'll share with you guys the results, good or bad, when I when I get through this process. Okay, so I started to resolve my problem and then I found a simpler solution. Sometimes if I just give myself a second. So I was gonna remove this and uh, turn it around. But instead of doing that, all I had to really do is change, the wedding was upside down. So I just peeled it off. I'm gonna glue it in right side up. This was glued in upside down. I'm gonna glue that in right side up. Now over here, I had a card um, that was a tuck spot. I had to tear that to take it off. I'm gonna cover the slight mar here on the paper with, um, with a little tag. Um, let's do two tags, like so. And then down here is where the ring was and um, it looked funny upside down. So I took it off and I don't know where it is at the moment, but I'm gonna glue it back down, but I'm gonna put this bouquet here first and help cover up this spot. So instead of removing this paper and the flaps, I just remove the embellishments. Now these two sheets are upside down from what would be the normal orientation, but it's very hard to tell. So I'm not going to stress that at all. Always a solution. Sometimes it takes a day, you have to walk away and come back. Other times, just a few minutes, you're like, oh, why would I do it the hard way? <laughs> just remove the embellishments, which aren't taking up that much space. And oh my gosh, I should have checked again yeah, I'm right side up now. Okay, so 
So that's in. Everything is looking pretty good. Got my little bouquet. Let me get the little glue back here. Like so, so these need to be glued down. And then I really do need to take a break and clean up my desk because it's a mess. It's always a mess, but it's an especially bad mess right now. I think I've, I'm trying to push those tags and they just don't seem to be working for me. How about, uh, let's do this. Where there's love, there's life. I like the contrast. So I'm gonna use this. Lots of goodies left over for when you're actually putting your photos in your album. I think that's everything. Uh, I was thinking about putting the rings back down, but honestly, I don't know what I did with them. Another reason to clean my desks. But before I make any more mistakes, let's go ahead and do something here. And oh, looky here! I <laughs> I have another I have another frame. But I definitely have some issues here. The other one is so much bigger. It tore up in this part up here, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to cover that up a little bit. All right. <clears throat> oh, this is the cake. I don't like the cake. I like this better. So this is where it tore. That's why I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and toss that. I prefer this floral picture to the cake. I don't know why, but I just don't like the cake. And that's our other option. Let's do the bird. Okay, so I need, I need another piece of white cardstock. That's not white enough. trim this to fit to cover all my mistakes and we're gonna take a look at it. And that's gonna leave me with a very large border. So The solution will be to double mat. So we'll put something behind this on top of the white to fill that gap. And then we'll glue the whole thing together. And ooh, that's way too busy. Challenges, I don't have a lot of pieces of paper that are this size. Oh, do I? Thank you. 
page that won't end. You thought it was a simple page. <laughs> I haven't done an upside down page in a long time, but it does happen. put this on white cardstock before I layered it again, but I'm so over this page, I'm putting it down as is. And the only one that'll know is me. Okay, it's also very heavy. Okay, so now it's gonna be slightly high because of the mistake and the tear in the paper. Okay, problem solved. And I did it with scraps. The best way to solve a problem. Now we need to put something on the back here. Let's just go ahead and do this. Is that is that too much? That's a lot. That's a lot. I wish I had something like that. That's too narrow. Okay. I'm not liking my choices. No. Okay. Just can do that. I really like this pattern a lot. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll be back soon with a walkthrough.